Hello everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to be working on some keychains. I had an idea that I wanted to try out that I've never done before, so I started looking for some simple shapes to test this with. Then, I had the random idea of using flags to create a keychain. So let's dive in and begin by taking a vector file with a bunch of flags and isolating the ones we're going to be using. Ideally, we should try to be faithful to the right colors of the flags, so we're going to pick the ones that I know I have the colors for. Since I have an AMS unit that supports four colors, I'm going to pick some flags that have four colors in various combinations. I'm going to pick red, white, green, and blue as my colors, and so I'll choose Canada, Italy, and France as the countries whose flags I'll print. Let's isolate each of those into their own file and export each as an SVG. Now for each of those flags, I'm going to load them up into Fusion 360 and begin the extrusions. Let's speed through the SVG exports, which I'm doing in Affinity Designer, and get to the modeling part in Fusion. Here we are in Fusion 360. I've already set up my project by saving the empty document. This way, I'm always ready to save my work. We're going to start off by creating a new sketch. To choose Create Sketch, choose the top plane. Now it's time to create the keychain. We'll start off by creating a circle. We'll make this 45 millimeters. It'll be slightly larger than this after we create the lip around it, but only just slightly. Now we're ready to import our flag. Let's begin with the Canadian flag. Choose Import, then SVG, and Insert from my computer. Choose the flag, and let's resize it. As you can see, there was a mask that was making it circular when looking at the vector image. That's okay, because we planned ahead by laying out the circle that will be the boundaries for our keychain. Let's position it so that the top and bottom edges of the flag are just touching or slightly outside our circle. When we're happy with that, we click OK to place the flag. Now, we're going to trim the pieces that fall outside of the circle. Click on the scissors icon, or the T key, to choose the trim tool. Let's take away all the lines outside of the circle. What we're left with here is just a circular flag like we had before in our vector file. At this point, we can begin extruding this into a 3D model. Let's begin by clicking on the outer edge of the circle and choosing the offset tool. Let's keep the default of 1 mm. This will give us a small lip around the edge. Now let's choose a new lip and extrude it by 3 mm. After we extrude the inside pieces by 2 mm, this will give us 1 mm lip around the front of the keychain. We'll keep the other side flat, otherwise we'd have to print it with supports. This way we'll have one side that will be flat and textured with our textured PEI plate, and the other side will have this indentation. Let's make our sketch visible again, and we can begin extruding the pieces of our flag. Select each section, then hit E to extrude, and extrude it by 2 millimeters. We'll run through each section, remembering to select New Body before clicking OK on the Extrude dialog. This ensures that we'll be able to select each piece separately when setting colors later. Now let's check out the end result and what it's going to look like when it's printed. Looks exactly like what we want. So let's move on to the next part, adding our keychain loop. We could do this here in Fusion or in Bamboo Studio. Since we're here, let's go ahead and do an infusion. Switch to the Solid tab if you're not already there. Then click Create, then Torus. We'll click on the top plane that we're in, then once again to lay down the center point. Try to center it with the origin center so that it's less to move later. Now choose 10 millimeters for the outside size and two for the inner. Let's change views and line it up so that it's just touching our circle. Bring it up so that it's at the same level 
as the flat side of our flag. Now let's go check our work. If you're following along, yours should look the same. If not, undo your work and follow the video again. Now that we have our first keychain done, I'm going to speed through the others. I'll save and export this one out first, then begin the rest of the flags. I'm going to export this out as a step file, then begin a new model. The next two keychains, the France and Italy ones, are really the same object. The only difference will come later on in Bamboo Studio when we go set the colors. But we'll only need to do the modeling part once, and we'll save and export it. We're going to follow the same process as before. Create our container circle, import our SVG image, line it up and scale it down so that the sides of the flag end up on either side of the circle. Then we'll use the trim tool to get rid of all the exterior parts of the design we don't need, and we create a lip using the offset tool. Then select it and extrude it. After that, it's just a matter of selecting the inside parts, extruding those, and we'll be done. One thing I forgot to record was the keychain loop on the second model, but it's the same as the first one, so if you need to review that, just pause the video and go back to the first model. Now that we have our two models, we can go on to Bamboo Studio to get our prints on. Now that we're back in Bamboo Studio, we'll do the same as we always do. Start off by importing our Canada keychain first. Go ahead and move that up a bit. Next, we'll get the three column flag in. Both France and Italy have the same structure, so we can just import one model into the slicer. We can then clone the model to get a second version. We'll rename one of the models here to distinguish one from the other and know which to color with the right filament. Now, we'll go into paint mode and choose the paint bucket tool. We can start coloring in by simply choosing the color we want to fill with and clicking in each section. Remember the shortcut for choosing a color is the number key that appears in each color swatch above the tool type in the paint dialog. The colors in the palette represent the current colors that we have loaded as filament in our AMS unit. However, they are not representative of the colors that we're going to load up for the final prints. So just to get a better visual, let's change the colors. We can do that by double clicking on each color swatch under the filament section and changing to the proper color. We'll swap those colors out real quick, then head back into the paint tool to finish painting our flag. We're going to wrap up the Canadian flag and move on to the French flag. We'll do the same as before going into the paint tool and assigning colors. Once again, all we're doing here is selecting the colors by choosing one through four on the keyboard and clicking on the pieces that need the colors. After the French flag, we can go ahead and wrap this up by assigning the Italian flag colors. After doing a little bit of tweaking, one thing I'd like to do is turn on ironing to get the top surfaces smooth. Since this is going to print two-sided, one side will be facing down on the print plate and that will take care of making that side smooth. The tops, however, will end up with layer lines if we don't do something about it. So I'm going to turn on ironing to try to get the smoothest top surfaces that I can. I printed out a set of test strips that I refer to, which has various properties like the speed and flow. I'm going to choose 20 millimeters per second and a 20% flow rate. Those values look good to me in the test strips, so I urge you to print out those strips for yourselves and see what works best for you. Now that we have everything set here, it's time to print these and go on to the next step. See you in a bit. Our prints are done, so let's take a look at the finished product. It looked fantastic. We have a nice smooth finish on the top due to that ironing pass, and we have the nicely textured back which was the side that was on the print plate. But we're not done yet. There's another step we need to take here, and that's to use the lip we modeled to act as a container for a layer of resin. I want these to have a nice shiny cover, 
as if it were a snow globe. Let's go ahead and start that process. So let's use the bed lining here, but I don't have much of a workspace. What I'm going to be doing is taking this UV resin that comes in a squeeze bottle, and I'm going to start applying a nice thick layer to the tops of my keychains. I've got to be careful here to not put too much, since I don't want it to overflow. I'll do this to each of the keychains. You can see right away how nice and shiny they're going to be. It will have the look as if they had a glass top. That's exactly the look that we're going for here. There's a few big bubbles here that I need to pop. I don't have anything long and pointy nearby other than this mechanical pencil, so I wanted to use the point of the pencil to pop those bubbles. Seems to be working rather well. I saw somewhere that you can burn off the bubbles as well. I got myself one of those long lighters and began waving the fire around the tops of the keychains. This didn't do anything except set off some noxious fumes that were causing my eyes to water. I'm sure I'm doing something wrong here, so I stopped this right away. There weren't many bubbles left, so it's best to just leave it as is before I set fire to the house. Now, one thing I probably should have done is put these keychains on a platform or plate of some sort so that I could lift and put on my resin curing station after filling the tops with the resin. Since I didn't do that, I was afraid that if I tried to lift them, I would spill the resin and ruin the keychains. I remember that I had a UV flashlight, so I went and got it and waved it around the tops of the keychains for a minute or so. I figured that it would harden them enough to allow me to transport them to the curing station. It seemed to have worked well and managed to move them without spilling anything. I have this curing station from the resin 3D printer I have, which is now collecting dust. I put the keychains on them and kicked it off for four minutes. When the machine stopped, I checked the tops and while they were hard, they were still a bit sticky to the touch, so I let them go for an additional four minutes. At the end, they felt great. Let's take one last look at them in better lighting. They look awesome. Look at the shine on them. This is a great technique that I, th I think I need to explore some more. I think there's great possibilities here, mixing both 3D prints and resin coverings. Got any suggestions for more experiments or other tutorials? Leave a comment below. Please like the video and subscribe if you haven't. It really helps. Take care everyone, and I'll see you soon.